Today we are going to talk about seed packets. All right. So if you have any seeds laying around, and in fact, I would kind of like to show you, I'm really excited about how we are organizing our seeds. So if you have a bunch of seeds at home and you would like to organize your seeds, let me show you. This was just a really fun, um, it's actually for organizing CDs, but you can open it. Or actually, I'm sorry, not CDs, for photos. It's a photo organizer. So we just basically use, and I put different ones each in here, and I alphabetize them. So for instance, like here we have parsley, and then pea snaps, lots of different types of peas in here, and so on. So if you ever, and then one thing I'd still like to do, but I haven't done yet, is alphabetize them maybe with a label maker also. So then it's really easy to find. And I also have another one. We have so many seeds here at school. So don't forget, boys and girls, if you are still wanting to grow something at home, please stop by school, call when you get here, and the office can bring you out some seeds. Please, we have plenty of seeds. So if you'd like to plant at home, Come grab some. All right. So, um, I, I think for a lot of this, we're going to just stay zoomed in on the seed packets. Uh, so I chose this one because this one says winter squash and it's fall time. So I was thinking, well, when do we plant winter squash? And, and so we can take a look at the, the front. Um, this one says that they're organic. It gives the name honey nut. Which you know, if it look, if you look at it, it kind of looks honey colored, okay. And it gives it gives a fancy Latin name for it, cur curbitia moschata. It sounds it sounds most well, Latin. It tells us how many seeds are in, what it costs. Frost sensitive. That means as soon as it gets cold, these ones are are going to suffer. They could die if it gets cold enough. Um, and so it says 110 days. And, and if we think about that, if there's about 30 days in every month, that's almost four months. So we need to have it growing four months before it can freeze. So it says, so after last chance of spring, far, uh, sorry, spring frost, which means we've totally missed that window. It's fall time, even though they're winter squash. It is fall. We, we have totally missed our chance to plant these winter squash, it, which means to me that we would probably plant them, you know. Beginning of school or in the summer? Right. The, I, I would say maybe uh, February, March, maybe April or May. Um, just enough time so, so that we can grow them really big before it freezes. And then it, it tells you a little bit about it. This extra sweet butternut cousin caramelizes when roasted. So that means it turns real sweet when it's roasted. On the vine, its green skin changes to, to terracotta, signaling ripe, ripeness. It means it changes color to, to this sort of yellowish, brownish color. Yeah. Yeah. Terracotta is how they describe it. Kind of like the color of the, the bricks over there. It's mm -hmm. like a terracotta color. Like in the garden bed over there. Oh, there's terracotta too right there. Right, or there's terracotta pottery. Pots. And then we'll take a look at the back side because this gives us more information, right? The whole seed packet is there so, so you can learn as much about these seeds before you plant them. So let's look at the other side. It gives a picture of the seedling. Now each seed packet is different. So each one is going to have a little bit of different, different information, but they're still trying to get the best information that they can to you. Day, so it gives a picture of the seedlings and it says days to emerge, five to 10 days. That means if we plant this in the ground and, and make sure it's watered, we have to water it for five to 10 days before we see anything. Then it will, as a little seedling, start to, to pop out. It says seed depth, one inch, right? One inch, you plant it in the ground, one inch. Seed spacing, it says two to three seeds per mound. 
So that means every, if, if you remember our pumpkins from, from years before or our cantaloupe from this year, our mound is our bed, right? And so for, for each little area that we want to put, we want to put two or three seeds and, and make them about four to six feet apart, right? Mound spacing. So, so every four feet, we have two or three seeds. Okay? So about the size of a, of a normal adult human, right? Um, thinning, when leaves, when three leaves thin to one to two plants per mound. So, so we want to control how many plants are growing right next to each other. We only want one or two plants after they've emerged. And then again, it goes back to 110 days. This one's nice because it tells, it gives you a little box to, to mark the date when you planted it. And then it gives some instructions when to sow outside and when to start inside. It says, Recommended, so outside, plant in the ground. Don't start it inside, not recommended, right? And then it says one to two weeks after your average last frost state and when soil temperature is 70 to 85 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's pretty warm, right? That, that means it's best to plant this when it's nice and warm outside, when there's no chance of it getting really cold. Usually what I think of when I think of a frost is around 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, even though it doesn't freeze until 32 degrees Fahrenheit, plants will still suffer at, at you know, below 40. Um, so, so that's that's our squash there. You know, we, we could read a little bit more. It says it's, it's non-GMO. That, that just means that uh, open pollinated and untreated. It, it means that these guys practice good farming procedures when, when they make these seeds. You know, they don't use a lot of crazy chemicals. They make sure that the bees have a chance to go visit the flowers and, and they don't put any chemicals on, on their seeds. And that's the, you know, if we were to have Crete, we have created our own seeds here before as well. We actually uh, saved arugula seeds uh, two years ago. And so actually, if you ever wanted some, we, I believe we still have some, but seeds also can expire. So you want to make sure too, that you always look at the expiration date on the seed packets, because a lot of times you'll still, you'll still get some, some growth, but not as much if you, if they are expired. Right. And so this one says packed for last year, sell by the end of the year last year. That means it's best to get these in the ground this year or, you know, if we wait too long, then not all of them will grow, but there's still a chance that some of them will grow, especially if we're really good at farming, but it, it might take a lot of energy and not be worth it, especially when seeds are only $2.99 a pack. Yeah. And you'll just get more yield if you probably follow the expiration date. But I want to thing I did want to say was in our school garden here, we are, we would consider ourselves a non GMO, type of garden because we don't use any pesticides um, when we are uh, we use pretty full organic way of treating any of our weeds and, and grass right our, our, our herbicides are organic our pesticides are soap and and bugs okay we, we, we let loose other bugs like ladybugs yeah to, to take care of the problem bugs like aphids you know another thing I was thinking too for organizing while we're talking about when a good time is to plant, maybe even instead of alphabetizing your seeds, you can also do them by when it's maybe by months or when it's best to plant. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe you say, or, or this is best to plant in the fall. These are fall seeds, right? These are summer seeds. These are winter seeds that you would plant. Another way, um, if you were interested in organizing your seeds, could be something else, another way to organize them as well. Um, real quick, are we good on time? Yeah. Um, I figured we'd talk about something that grows well during the winter. Spinach grows really well in our winter, right? So, so this doesn't tell us how many seeds, because if you can hear, there's a whole bunch of seeds in there. It says it's Bloomsdale, and it gives its a fancy Latin name. This one says frost tolerant. That means Ooh. even though it's freezing, it's okay. You know, if it's really cold, then it won't be able to survive. But, but 
you know, even if it's still around freezing temperatures, around 32 degrees Fahrenheit, these should still be okay. This is also way quicker. It says 28 to 45 days, right? And then so in early spring or late summer. It's, 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 a, it's a little late for late summer, but uh, I think we could still plant them if we wanted to. Let's flip on over to the other side. You know, this... Well, an old, an old favorite among gardeners, Bloomsdale has excellent flavor. Fall-grown leaves are every bit as succulent as spring leaves and baby greens. Right? They want to sell it to us. They, they want to make it sound really good. Right? I like that it gives the picture of a seedling, right? It was those really long cotyledons, right? Um, it's those a, cotyledons are like the baby teeth, right? Right. <laughs> our, our baby leaves, the first leaves that come out and, and that only time it produces the cotyledons is only when it's a baby um this one five to ten days to emerge so similar to our squash but this one's only half an inch so so pretty close to the surface if you think about how how big is half of an inch it's not very deep so maybe just drizzle some soil over it right that just a, a little blanket of soil over the top seed spacing group of three seeds every six inches so a bunch of seeds in a small place, right? Row spacing, up 12 inches or, or a foot. So, so you're going to think when they become full size, they're going to be about as, almost as big as a ruler is, so about 12 inches apart. And then when they're at one inch tall, you want to thin them back, which means pull out the extra ones um, so that you have only one every six inches so, so, so that they don't crowd each other and, and start to fight with each other. You know, you want, you want them to be healthy and happy. You don't want them overcrowded. And, and again, it says maturity 28 to 45 days. So that means if we planted them today in one month, we should be able to eat them. In two months, they should, should totally, all of them should be ready. Maybe we can plant some of that. We have now that we've taken those uh, chives out. Maybe we could plant them. That's a good idea. Yeah, maybe we'll do that after. <laughs> Recommended. When to sow outside? Four to six weeks before your average last frost date, or when your last soil frost, huh? soil temperature is above forty degrees. Every well, then it says keep going. It says. Uh, s s successive sowings which means planting. you keep planting them every every couple weeks right so it says every three weeks until four weeks before your first fall frost so so it, it that means about a month before you expect it to get cool. frost, frost right 40, 40 degrees huh? right which is right about now honestly yeah right if so we plant them now time. depending on when it gets cold you know We'll, these will keep producing long after that. Remember, they're cold tolerant. And then it says not to rec not recommended to to plant them to start them indoors because they don't like to be moved around. They don't like to be transplanted very much. So um, we're, we're going to plant some of these spinach here, uh, and and what I hope you took from this, what we hope you took from this is 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 how to organize not just your your seeds but your garden because you have to read those labels you have to to know when it's going to grow you can't you could just throw your seeds out but if it's not the right time they're not going to grow and that could be too you know because i know sometimes as as a as a farmer right you, you know it's sometimes we want you to be successful at what you're doing and, and it's okay sometimes if things don't come up but you're going to be more successful at planting and be happier if you are reading the labels correctly so you know when to plant because that will definitely make a big difference. All right, boys and girls. Thank you. Thank you for joining us at our Goins live session. And we will see you not next week, but the week after, November 6th. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye.